Hello everyone. So today we will be working on lab number three. Uh, so in this lab, we're going to learn how we can add the scripts. C sharp, C sharp script, as you know, we use C sharp programming in, uni uh, in the Unity. So we'll see how we can add the C, uh, C sharp script uh, and how we can attach those scripts with our players, uh, with the materials, grounds and things like that. How we can attach th those particular script with our game objects. Uh, so we're going to see the uh, script, we'll write a script and see how we can move a player. So we got five tasks here. We are going to use exactly the same scene, same players, same setup that we developed in our lab number two. So uh, if you are still working on the lab number two, if you have any questions, do let me know. Uh, because lab number three requires lab number two setup. So if you guys see down here, uh, I have this particular setup down here. This is my player. That's the ground which we created in the last class and that's basically how the game, I mean, it will look like. Now what all we have to do is, since we just want to add a script here, uh, so, uh, so we can move the player according to script and according to what exactly we want. So we, we just want to actually move the player and we want to give the control through the keyboard and all that. So let's see how we can do that. In order to do that, let's come to your project window, right click here. And then we need to create and hit here C sharp script. So once you create a C sharp script, we need to give a suitable name to this. Let's say it is the player script. Make sure you did not add any, any spaces in between the name. And you will see this is our C sharp script for our player. I mean, which we can assign to any, like to the ground player or whatever the object in the game. Now just double click this. Make sure your Visual Studio is pre-installed. If it is not, then please you can pause the video and install Visual Studio. So this is a typical c -sharp program. It's an object-oriented programming as you guys can see here. That's exactly the same name, player script, the name of our script. Uh, mono behavior, it's basically uh, what we call the Unity built-in function. And right now over player script, the script which we just created, it, it is, it, it is, in, it inherits the behavior of mono behavior, which is the built-in function come with the, uh, our Unity 3D. If you see right here, uh, in the C sharp programming, you might have seen there are basically few methods. Uh, right here, if, if you see down here, we have two methods. One is the start method and second is update method. Start method, of course, as you can see, I mean, the script, uh, it's the comment is down here. Whenever you run over script, so first of all, the start script, it will run and then uh, the update script. But the benefit of update script is that it will run once per frame. Like frame means uh, typically a videos or the games, they have 25 FPS, but it depends on your processor, your GPU. If you have 60 frames per, if it can process 60 frames per second, so what will happen? It will run the script 60 times. So that's basically where uh, what the programming is. So let me just show you what exactly this script does and how exactly it can do. So let's uh, let me just show you. How, uh, let me just create a simple um, display function. Let's say. So in order to do that, I'm going to actually type here debug debug dot log. This is a function, it will display whatever you will provide to it. And then let's say, hello world, something like that. And let's say a semicolon. So what it, it's gonna do is, whenever we run the script, it will display hello world, okay? Uh, let me just file and let's, let's control us. Let's save the script. So once you save the script and let me show you what's gonna happen now once I run this script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this script uh, with the player. Okay, let me just attach the script with the player. I'm going to drag it down and put it onto the player. Now the script has been added to the player. If you click the player, you guys will see here if I scroll down under the inspector icon, you can see here the player script has been attached with my player. Okay, now let's play the game. Once you play the game, if you see in the console, you can see down here, hello world. Like what happens, the script got run over player, it, it executed the script. Uh, let's see, if I change it, let's say, let's, let me open, go back to my script again. Now, for example, as, as I mentioned to you guys, for example, if we, uh, like the updates, update method, it 
runs uh, once a frame and depending upon your GPU uh, how many frames it can execute in one second it will do that let me show you if I cut paste this if I move this one and paste it down here and save my script now you will see here it will once I play the game because script is auto, auto, uh, auto, uh, uh, sorry script is auto, uh, already attached with the player so if I just run this now if I run this script now if you see in the console you guys can see here it will keep on running if you see I mean how many frames this is basically the number of frames which my processor can execute you can see multiple time hello world hello world whatever we we asked it to do that let me just uh, do one thing here just to show you a difference because start script will run first and then the um, the update script let's say this is the update it's it's something like it will keep on updating uh, updating uh, keep on basically um, running the script over and over unless you define a loop and all that stuff here so this is the update section and let's say if I copy paste the same thing here and let me just put it down here let's say sorry about that If I put here, um, hello, game is started. And now let me just save this. Now both of the scripts should run and it should display whatever we put after the debug.log. If I go down here and let me just play the game. Once you play the game, if I show you the console, you guys can see here, it's basically processing. Let me just stop. And if I show you at the start, hello, the game is started, and then it went in, into the update section, update method, and it kept on updating it. Up, uh, updating means repeating it over and over. Now just take a few screenshot here, whatever the requirements are. Um, and I mean, you can, you can see here, we need to just put these stuff here. And let me just move on to our next task then so next uh, what we're gonna do is we need to see how we can move a player if I click the player if you see here this is my player now and all right so if you see down here this is my player if I if you see here uh, this is X uh, Y coordinate I can move it into three coordinates this is my X coordinate and I do have another coordinate which is basically the, the Z coordinate like it can move uh, you know uh, uh, back and forth so I just want to move my player to forward for example let's say let me just uh, show you what exactly we can do let's say for example if I just uh, change the position of my player to let's say let me just start from here let's say my ground position let me just set my ground position let me just set my ground position and ground position is let's say uh, Z is 45 okay I just want want to start from here and let's say my my player position from let me start from zero so it will be right on to the uh, let's zoom in so it's right at the start approximately at the start of my and let me just align this uh, let me select my camera go to game object aligned with the view so we can see whatever it is doing so let me just click the player and let's say if I move my z value you guys can see here let's say if i just keep on moving the z value let's say one two three you guys can see here let's say one one point one okay let's say three point one four point one you guys can see here once you move uh, once you change the value of z it will automatically uh, change the position it will automatically change the position in z axis like back and forth and that's exactly what we want so uh, but we don't want to actually do it through here we want to get it done through the programming we want to get this thing done like uh, the z value or the movement uh, we want to get this changed through over let me just change it to zero 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 okay and well, let's say y is one so we can actually see that and i just want to actually change all these position but mainly my point is to change the z value through programming through my script how we can do that i'm going to show you two methods here one the real programmers the way how they actually get it done and second method I'm going to show you through uh, the rigid body that's uh, a simple method in fact which is the vector graphics method 
Okay, so now if I just want to show you uh, what's the current position of my player, so we can change the Z value and all that stuff. Let's see how we can get it done. Uh, let's go back here. Let me just show you the current position. To print it out, we'll do debug dot log and then transform dot position. So it will show you the, pos the current position and semicolon. I'm going to actually save this. Once you do that, we'll go back here, we'll it will automatically get applied. Once we play this, what's going to happen if we go to console, you can see the position, the current position of our player. This is the, um, I mean, you can see in the fraction, this is by the way, x-axis, that's the y-axis and minus 45 is the z-axis. This is the current position of our player. And we can, of course, I mean, that's the one which we, we, we want to keep on changing it, in fact. Now let's see, I'm going to actually apply this to the camera so we can see this from uh, align to the view. All right. All right. So now let's see how we can keep, how we can change the position of uh, our object automatically. I, I mean, I just want to actually control this position of Z automatically. Let's see how we can do that. We'll go back here. And all and again, if you want to kept on changing the position, so it has to be in the update, but let's see what how exactly it will work. So uh, what I'm going to do is transform position and I need to change the variable because I don't want to display that. My point is to make a change. So transform dot position equal to transform dot position so what i'm basically doing is this is the variable transform dot position i want to change the transform dot position and i want to add new and then i'll put this is the variable built-in variable vector 3 that's basically change the position and then i have to apply uh, x-axis y-axis and all so zero position for x-axis for example zero for y-axis and let's say one for z-axis and f for fraction because it will take in the fractions now I need to save this once I will save this I'll see what impact it will apply in my game let's play this uh, we got some compiler errors we need to check it out let's see oh sorry about that semicolon and then save let's see if we see if applied let's play this once it got applied, what happened? You guys can see here, it just add one. If you see, it is just added one. So what, I mean, because we just add one here. So uh, what we're gonna do is, if we want to actually keep, because only one step got ahead. So start means, I mean, in start function, it will apply only once. But if we wanna kept it moving, if you wanna move it, so if I just copy paste this, I mean, cut, cut this, and paste it in update and as I told you guys in update what should happen it should keep on applying it because once it will be executed once per frame and I got I think more than 60 frame per second so you will see the position now if I save this now if we save this and if we play the game you guys can see here it moved very fast okay let's start again you guys can see here once we started it's, it, it is moving right now very fast because all the frames and all that stuff is being applied here. Now what I'm gonna do is if I just wanna move it, I mean, I wanna control the speed. So let's say if you wanna control the speed, everything else will be same. I just have to apply a built-in function which is called a delta function. A delta time function is a built-in Unity 3D, uh, 3D object. Once you apply that, what's gonna happen? It will make uh, slow changes in the time. So everything else will remain same all I need to do is multiply with time dot delta time okay this is time dot delta time this function if I save this now now let's see if uh, it will take this argument okay let's try this and it's being applied let me apply it if you guys can see here now, the player is moving very slowly because I have applied a small change here. And if I just want to make it fast, like I'm a little fast because it was too slow, so I will put it 10, 10 time, and then I will save it. 
and let me show you how it will work now you guys can see here much better it is basically moving much better now so this is by the way the first method or one method in order to make changes or in order to uh, move the player now i'm going to show you another one which is basically um, the rigid method task number four i'm going to show you the rigid method how exactly we apply the rigid method and uh, most of the programmer they do that way i mean that's the way how most of the programmers they actually do so in order to do that what i'm going to do is i will um, let me just move delete this one and let me just uh, add another variable here i'll just add one more variable here and uh, that variable is going to be um, okay so let's see if i can add uh, okay for the rigid body for method what we are going to do is i'm going to um, add a rigid body here we need to create a new class for the rigid body and then we need to attach it with the player so how we can do that we need to create a new class here public and then the rigid body and the rigid body object here this is the rigid body object we we need here rigid body all right so once you apply this i have created a variable a public variable to get the rigid body so public variable rigid body is created and this variable or value will be added to it and we will customize it of course i'll show you we'll move it through the rigid body or the through, through the physics so if I show you what action has applied in the game, if I go to the game, click the player, you guys can see here in the um, in the script, we got a rigid body. Right now, no rigid body has been attached to it, but a rigid body has been added with our player. And if I show you guys here, and for the rigid body, what we're gonna do is I need to add here uh, some sort of physics here. I need to apply that and then I'll, I'll uh, I'll just write a script for that. So let's let's uh, let's quickly write down the script here and let's see how it will make a difference. So what I'm going to do is I will go to update because the rigid body has been added, but I just have to apply a material here. And in order to um, in order to give a command to rigid body, I'm going to actually let's see rigid body because that's the variable belong to the rigid body uh, body public class. So rigid body and i need to add some force here add force so it can move so let's say i will go to zero for x-axis zero for y-axis and let's say if i'm just i'm just putting some force 1000 f uh fract for to give the fraction and move it with time so i just want to move it uh, a little slowly so delta time So what I did is I have applied the rigid body to that and uh, add a force, add a force and for x axis 0, y axis 0 and this is basically uh, my z axis and z axis is being changed according to a delta time which we already talked about. So now what's going to happen once you apply all this? If we go down here and if I just play the game if you see what should happen you guys can see here it is basically rolling down and again speed is of course fine speed is fine but it is basically rolling down the question is why it is basically rolling down and the answer is very simple that's because of friction so how we can control over that friction how we can do that in order to do that we need to create a new material here and we need to avoid the friction i mean we need to just get rid of that friction so it will not roll down because that's what exactly we don't want so how we can do that we need to create a new material right click go to create and this time we need to create a physics material once we click the uh, physics material it's a physics material we need to name it let's say you can give a name for example no friction no friction once i double click this no friction right now dynamic friction is 0.6 i'm gonna actually put it zero this is, should be zero and that's zero and rest is fine once you do that friction that's fine now i need to apply this friction to my ground because what happens whenever one object moves on to the other object there is a friction and since we have already applied rigid body so because of the physics and rigid uh, the friction it basically start uh, getting rollover so i need to apply this to my ground once you apply this to your ground 
now if I just play this it should not you guys can see here that's the way how we were we, we wanted it we will continue uh, this uh, this project in the next lab lab number four where we will see how we can take input from user how we can move it left right and all that stuff and all we will do it through our script so make sure before you close the lab or the project save this and paste all the required screenshot whatever is required for your lab if anybody will have any questions just do let me know thank you